Hello, folks. Today is April 4th, 2024. So it is 4 4. And 2024 is 2 2 and 4. So that's 4 4 4 4. And I began to speak to a dear sister last night about the relevance of 4 4 and some incredible uh, scripture verses that had to do with. For for uh, yesterday because she was speaking with me uh, in regards to when Father wanted her to release a specific message and the Father told me to go into looking at some of those four four verses and when I got to the latter some of the latter chapters of the New Testament it was very obvious that he had wanted her to, as well as myself, bring forth some things on 4-4. And I'm not going to go into, you know, those chapters, but some of them, I believe, were in Colossians or Philippians um, and some of the latter books to look at some of those things. And it wasn't just 4-4 verses. And again, I don't remember specifically what those chapters were, but you'll see a theme come forth with some of those. And four is the number for creation itself, like the whole of creation. And so when you get two fours or many fours, if you get at least three, four, 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 which is one of my favorite numbers with the Lord, it represents full as the number three, three of them is full. Four of them is fully creative. So if you get four, four, that's double creation essentially like a double anointing or a double mantle it's double whatever we're talking about but when you get three it's wholeness when you get four you have now ventured into complete recreation creation creation being recreated today is four 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 when you put the twos together so we're we're talking about fully recreating or rebirthing i think that that's quite important to a great and many people because eight in itself if you have four 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 and four you have two eights which is new beginnings again these are just circumstantial to most people any kind of numbers significance, but I, but I tell you, if you search uh, long and hard in scripture, you'll start to see some themes when you look up numbers as example, chapter four, verse four, what does it say? And what follows that? As I began to do that with the Lord last night, for an example, one of them, Luke four, four, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God's mouth. It means you don't live by sustenance down here in in the carnal. We don't live carnally alone. We live by every word that proceeds out of the spirit mouth of God. We live by spirit. I received a dream yesterday, which I will go into detail at some point. And it details out the current state of his house. So this video will be a warning And I don't know what we're going to title it yet until I get finished, but it will be a warning and it'll be a warning to the whole world. You will hear things about America and you'll hear things about the house of God. I'm going to play one of the only clear and true prophetic messages that I have received. I've received two lately, though. One came from a dear brother named Umbling on YouTube. Edward Umbling, I believe, is his name. And it had to do with a political figure in our nation. And it's one of the only true representations that I have heard about this specific political leader. What I'm going to play forth of a video was sent to me this morning by a dear sister named Tracy. And I'm glad she sent it to me because the Lord has been speaking to me about the nation of America. And when I say nation, I mean the country itself, the way that it is run. When I normally speak of nation, I will speak of a people and a culture, which really does tie into this. 
because it's why we're in the state that we're in. And he said, America founded itself in such language as in God we trust. They covenanted. When a covenant nation begins to not uphold covenant, nor the God of righteousness, judgment eventually comes in. And that's what he's been speaking to me about. And we hear a lot in the famous prophetic circles how we're going to make America great again. And he says, do not let me allow you to forget this nation founds itself on pride. Old glory is your flag's name and song. The pride of America is a stance that this nation's people take. And simultaneously, they speak with their lips that they honor me, but with their hearts or souls and inner being, they are far from me, which means we're in gross darkness. The hearts of men and women are in gross darkness. And he said, I will state it again right now. The reason for the demise of this nation will be because of the house of God. You see, Reprobate will always be reprobate, but the house of God is to be clean and sanctified and consecrated under the holy God of righteousness. And she has fallen. And so will America. He said, yes, I know this will be a strong word and I haven't even said any of this. He asked me to just come on and my voice is barely working. <laughs> it's 1130 a.m. my time, but I slept in today. I got some extra sleep and I've been awake, but I haven't spoken. You see, he has spoken a direct word to me that I do not take over satanic operations and revamp them. I entirely dismantle anything that is of darkness and I rebuild and I rebu rebuild on ashes. I take it all the way down to its foundation. That's what's coming for America. You will see when I play forth Terry Bennett, who was being interviewed by Chris Reed and Chris Reed had a dream too, but that dream was not what the Lord wanted me to bring forth today. It ties in, but it wasn't the main focus. Terry Bennett will lay it out. He will be bold. He will not sugarcoat anything. He'll say it as it is. And the Lord has been speaking to me directly that he's going to bring this nation to its knees, literally and spiritually speaking, meaning he will expect to see people on their knees before he is finished with this nation, because you understand it is the love of God that will do this. And the reason for that is this, if she's going down and he has people in this nation that he cares about that are not upright with him, he's going to do whatever it takes to arrest this development as well as be the just God that he is and bring in the judgment, which is this is what you've sown and I need to show you because if you continue this path, you will go off into the pit now and for eternity. So when we talk about America will be saved, he tells me a remnant of America will be saved. Many will be wiped out just like the wilderness and will not cross over. And from the bones and the ashes of what this nation will come to, we will rebuild my nation built on God the holy and righteous and most high one, and they will know that I am the Lord God. We've forgotten the fear of the Lord has fallen to the wayside very, very far back in this nation. And it is due to the stance of the church. He has had it with religion. He's coming to dismantle religion entirely. All religion. And that includes Christianity in the structure that we have always known it to be. He is not here to uphold religion. He is up here up here to uphold the truth, the way, and life with the most high and righteous God, who is God's supreme king over all of his creation. And this nation has forgotten that. We have compromised. We have gotten in bed with devils all the way from the highest governing positions all the way down to the average person and their children in their homes. And in the mix of that is the house of God that was supposed to be walking straight with God. But because she has fallen to the wayside, his bride, his people, Israel, the spiritual people, because they are compromised, because they are lukewarm, because they dalliance with the enemy and darkness and dance with it daily as well in their hidden lives, he's coming with great tribulation to shake her up that she should hit her knees and remember the fear of the Lord. 
America will be what God desires America to be. But she will be different in all her ways. Her geographical lines will change. Her affiliations will change. She will be completely dismantled all the way down to ashes and bone structure and rebuilt. That will come through much tears, much woe and much calamity for much time. And he said, I don't even want to talk about this election, if this election even takes place properly. And here's why he said, because the one you see as savior will be the beginning of the downfall of your entire nation. And I know that's going to hit a lot of people very hard, and I'll let you take that to the Lord by what we mean. But many believe there is a one person who's going to come into office and save this entire place. And he said, if that is not God Almighty in your hearts, you should drop to your spiritual knees right now for the adultery of this nation will go abroad and she will be an example to the rest of the world. What awaits them when you claim God with your lips, you do honor me, but with your hearts, you are far from me and you dance with my enemy. Folks, when he says you dance, that's not you hang out. You are intimate and you are intimate in a flow of unity. He's going to show the people of this nation what they are affiliated with in truth. What they uphold and why they do it. There is a such thing as called Christian nationalism. I don't even know what that is. But he tells me it is a vile group of people who will do whatever it takes to uphold Christianity. And that is of the devil. He means violence. He means taking up arms against one another. He means doing dastardly deeds in the name of Christianity. As if Christianity shall rule over all other people in cruelty and violence. And yet that type of group is in support of one type of political figure, which is erect America, make her great at all costs. And he said, I'm coming to take down this establishment. And folks, we ought to be really excited about that. Have you looked around and seen how reprobate the political system is in this nation? And he said, let's roll that back. You only get the representation of the people that you are. That is all I put in. I am a just God. I put in the representation of what represents you in your hearts, in the truth of who you are. And this nation will fall. It will falter. It will stagger. And it will fall eventually to a complete collapse to be rebuilt again because of the church. Those who are supposed to walk holy with me, upright, eschewing evil, ascending within their being to be righteous people, down, led down the righteous path with the righteous God thereof, in an order of Melchizedek priests. I don't have priests. You know, Satan has a priesthood right now, and it far exceeds mine in maturity. That should frighten us, folks. Because those that are called to be in a Melchizedek holiness and righteousness walked out in this earth priesthood are on the dark side. It's why all this is coming in. He said, if you saw all this, wouldn't you do what it would take to wake them? And they'll, bring, they'll come through great tribulation as you'll roll out in the dream that I gave you as well. He doesn't come here to take what Satan has done and fix it up and make it shiny. He comes here to wreck everything that darkness has established to make a statement that you will know that I am the Lord God. The darkness will know, the entities behind it will know, and the people affiliated it with it will know and go down. And the only way they'll ever rise back up into any kind of dignity of a stand before the holy living God is if they remain on their knees in reverent fear of the Lord God. Because it has been lost in the house of God and abroad because of that. So he'll come in with a just judgment. His weights and balances are just. He said, look at this nation. 
those that you're even in hopes for behind the scenes right now in the political system are corrupt. They put on the face. They say the things that you want to hear. And most of it is how your IRA is going to do, how your economy is going to come back up, what kind of things you're going to be able to do uh, in your nation for the border and the situation that has gotten so far gone that this nation is fully infiltrated at this point. You have sleeper cells everywhere waiting for the deployment. Violence is going to break out in, in, in nothing short of what you have never seen before. Great famine, worse than the Great Depression, you will see. Worse than the Great Depression will you see begging and starvation in this nation. Because there is a famine for the word of God, the person of God in this nation. And when there's an equivalent to that, the land and the people suffer calamity, woe, and great tribulation in a recompense of judgment from a storehouse poured out for what she has stored up for herself. In that place, there will be Goshen's. There will be safe havens where God's people are not touched. They are a remnant amount of people right now, a remnant of a remnant. You see, it's always going to be a remnant that he saves. Out of the totality of the number of the world will be a small remnant. But out of that remnant, only a few are fully mature at this point, walking the paths of righteousness in love. That's the problem. You have to walk the truth in the righteousness paths in love. And love is part of what God's going to bring in at this time. Recompense for what has been sown so that each and every life and individual and nation and people will know what they have truly been living inside and have an opportunity to hit their knees before the high and holy king because he's coming. And if you remember when he comes again, he's not coming as a lamb. He's coming with his crown on and his scepter in his hand. He is coming to take dominion over what is his. The earth and, and the fullness thereof, that's everything in it, is his. The heavens is his throne. The earth is just a footstool where he kicks up his feet. He's going to be boots on the ground. This year, he told me at the beginning, you tell them they have about 30 days to get mature. That was that was at, at the ceiling mark of his people for what is about to come in. Don't you touch these until they are sealed with the seal of the Holy Spirit, right? He's been doing that for quite some time. There will be Goshen's. There will be safe havens. There will be lighthouses who shine the actual glory of God going with them. The presence of the Lord himself to which all other peoples of the nation who are getting the fear of the Lord at that point will hit their knees and they will go to those who actually have become one with the Holy Spirit, not out of lips that claim it, not out of religious the theological doctrine. I was, I was given a, a message, a quote, a comment from someone who said, as a pastor and theologian, and the Lord said, take note right there, this person is coming from a natural mind and they know not the spirit. They do not walk with my spirit. They don't, they're, the only reason somebody would come and say that God has never spoken audibly through any other human since Christ does not understand the spirit of God, is not one with the spirit of God. And I'm not speaking through them because if they understood that I was, they would know that what's coming out of their mouth, if they were, would be the living words of God himself because he speaks through all his people. I broke in tears after that. I was not upset that this person was, was saying such things as, if you will get the recorded voice of God on a television show, he literally said that, then I will believe. And I wept because of the unbelief. I wept and I wept. The spirit of the Lord spoke to people directly from a burning bush and showing up as a spirit being all through the old Testament, the spirit of the Lord spoke through his prophets, even in the old Testament. And they quoted him as such this, thus says the Lord. Okay. To, to throw out the entirety of the foundation of the old Testament, they, what our, what our structure foundation of our new Testament is based on the walking that out of our Messiah showing up and then speaking through every one of those disciples and apostles and everyone that he moved with, 
the spirit of the Lord spoke through them. Even the Lord himself, Jesus, said to Peter, you do not know this by flesh and blood, but my father revealed this to you that I am the son of God, the Messiah, right? And then there was a comment about uh, like this Pentecostal movement thing that came out in like 1827 is like some sort of fallacy ex experience or such that they, and I sat there and I thought, Oh dear God, 1827. I'm like, then do they not believe in the Pentecost that originated Pentecost when God in his spirit thereof moved through his people and spoke directly through them? so that all the people could understand his message that had nothing to do with 1827 and some Pentecostal denomination. Pentecostal is the first church, meaning it was established at Pentecost. It was established upon unity with the Holy Spirit and being imbued with his power. It was being baptized in the fire, the tongues of fire that went over. Just, I just wept and wept at the unbelief that the antichrist spirit, the religious spirit has done to people. And it's only fear, God said, that someone would even write, if you can prove it, I'll then believe. He said, because inside that person, they're actually being shaken to their core, that there's a possibility they could be deceived. So we will break over all of these, Janet, we will intercede. And I wept and I wept over that uncontrollably. This is the extent of the darkness, not just in the countries of people in their cultures, but in the church itself. So what comes to this nation will show all other nations a wake-up call unto the fear of the Lord, unto righteousness again, walking the paths therewith and becoming one with the Spirit of God. That means to become one with someone means you're so interjoined in your inner structure and what your character and person is built on that you can't even distinguish the difference anymore. People should be able to look at the people of the house of God and say, I just had an encounter with the Lord himself in that person's life. We should carry such an anointing being so covered in the oil of the Lord and that intimacy wine, that vintage wine being produced of that intimate relationship inside of us, that when we bring the presence of the Lord around, when we bring as ambassadors rolling out the red carpet for the king himself to step right out of us, out of our mouth, out of our arms of love, out of our witness that he himself does his works through, they ought to know that they came in contact with the glory of the Lord that was resting with that person. We have fallen so far from that in this nation, but in the house of God entirely, that the judgment that comes to the nation of America will take her, he keeps saying, I will take her down to ash and bone. And I'll rebuild her, but she will look different in her geographical stance. That means that the literal land in this nation is going to be upheaval, uprising, and changed. In the, in the dirt, the literal geographical design of this nation. And it will be in the governmental structure. It will be dismantled. And I will take her through great tribulation to birth my birthing in this nation. And she will be an example to all other nations. I don't know any more about it than that, folks. I just know that that's what he has been speaking to me. I don't build on Satan's structure, period. I knock it down entirely. And I take it down to ash and bone. Ash means complete destruction, but bone means that he's leaving the structure that he, that he intended from the get-go to build on. Can these bones live again? They can but only when the Lord God is involved, right? Ezekiel, can these bones live again? You know, Lord. And then he watched. He said, speak to these bones. That was a man of God in faith to God, in reverence to God, in obedience to God, doing what God said. And then it grew again. The sinews and the muscles and the tissues grew again. That will be what this nation goes through and comes through if she will get on her knees, if she will humble herself, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, face me again. 
a total turnaround of repentance with the fear of the Lord. Then I'll even hear from them and forgive their sin. See, he's willing to do that, but he can't do it if we're fundamentally in bed with darkness. So we're going to step out of bed, being in bed with darkness, quite literally, by an act of each and every individual free will person, get on our knees before God and actually honor him in truth. It means you will honor the truth inside your vessel. You will bow to him. He will become the leadership in you because you have an actual reverence for him. And as that builds up, and as that multiplies in each and every individual life, she will come out of ashes and the bone structure will then again be revived. That's what's coming. And he said, without much more, please go into the video. So I am going to make sure that I've got it. You should be able to have seen this video for quite some time. I didn't have it on this screen, but hopefully that is what you have been seeing this entire time as it's recording. And I'm going to pause Actually, I don't have to pause the music. You're right, Lord. He said, just go back, hit mute on your microphone and hit play. And that's what I'm about to do, folks. Okay, Chris. So uh, it's interesting, as you said earlier in the program, um, on March uh, the 9th, I had the, the Lord speak to me and actually had a visionary experience, which I've named the road ahead uh, for America, uh, rather than just the USA, uh, for specific reasons. Uh, so on the ninth, I received this beginning visionary experience that has continued as we go down the road. I'm seeing further and further down the road. So, uh, and then on the tenth, same Sunday you shared, I shared publicly here in uh, Van Leer, Tennessee at our uh, Sunday morning meeting, uh, this experience. So I will read it to you. And I do believe uh, what you sh saw in the dream and what I saw in the visionary experience in these parts play off of each other beautifully and perfectly. As I was listening to you share more detail, I'm thinking, wow. So my wife, Donna, and I were driving in our SUV eastward on Interstate 40. Uh, 40 being significant, as you know, according to your dream. And uh, we, I-40 runs through Dixon County where we live. So we were driving on I-40 eastward in, in a time of the day where the sun was setting, which I thought was significant, and it was more dusky dark, not completely dark, but dusky, dusky dark. We came quickly to an area of roadway on I-40 that was so full of potholes that we had to slow down to almost a complete stop. Uh, we began to drive very slowly uh, through the potholes to get past them and go further down the roadway. I knew that the potholes represented deep issues and problems nationally within our nation in the areas of economy, um, also, it represented treachery, governmental agendas, banking controls, and malpractice of justice within our nation. I knew that because the potholes had names down in them of these things. That's how I knew wow. it. One, the biggest pothole we saw, we had to veer around it, was called the national debt. So I knew this as well. The Lord made it very clear to me that what I was seeing was all governmental issues in our nation. That's what I was told about it. There's other things, but the primary reason for all of this were governmental issues. And that was the issue we were looking at. I could see that these and many other extremely important issues had not been rightly nor righteously repaired but simply like throwing unpacked asphalt into a few of them and leaving them, the effect was basically uh, not helping, but making things worse. Uh, many of the deeper holes, uh, which had not been repaired, uh, were from systematic long-term problems. Through, 
I think, through several administrations looking to our past. So instead of truly addressing the problems and issues economically, governmentally, spiritually over recent years, we have instead compounded them through mismanagement of resources, personal evil agendas <clears throat> within federal and some state leadership. So uh, the Lord told me in all of this that uh, he said that it was impossible to give proper oversight to this nation of people if the leaders have no personal oversight, consequences, nor checks of their actions and behavior in their personal lives. So the Lord told me about it. Wow. Uh, that would go for the church as well, I do believe. Uh, so uh, moving forward, the potholes had names in the bottoms. National debt was the deepest pothole that I saw. We, we couldn't go through it. We had to go around it. Um, but also uh, border control, banking systems, overspending, personal agendas, injustice, rather than justice, um, overtaxation, foreign relations, foreign dependence for various supply and demand, breakdown of offshore, uh, breakdown and offshore movement of important American industries, et cetera, were the potholes. In the experience, it was about 100, 100 yards long as I was looking at it. Uh, that's I, I didn't see that number. I could just look at it. I, I used to be a surveyor civil engineer, so I have a pretty good eye for distances. I could tell we're looking at about 300 or so feet. May relate to days. Not positive. But uh, wow. I'm pretty sure the I-40 relates to weeks, like what you saw. Yeah, 40 weeks of pregnancy, right. Exactly, exactly right. The things that were unimportant or important and the most important, there was primary failure in our nation temporarily. Uh, and it was due, Chris, this was clear to me from the Lord. It was due to what Psalm 2 says, that our nation, its leaders have taken their stand against the Christ. That was very clear to me. And God's judgment coming was due to the Psalm 2 dynamic. Instead of kissing the sun, we have resisted him. So um, I'll, I'll kind of rush on in this, if that's okay. Um, I knew that this would be a temporary short-term thing, but followed by uh, much long, more long-term and, if I can say this, much worse. So this is not the major thing yet, but it's a step towards that major thing. Again, this will not be, however, the big and foretold collapse within our nation. Instead, uh, the Lord said these things right to me. There will be fractured functions, the breaking of certain structures and breakdown of some capabilities. I saw that like a human body and the breaking of bones in the human body. Structurally, there would be structural issues in our nation. I actually thought it was interesting of what just happened to the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore and its, and its collapse. Things like that on, you know, in our systems. Secondly, functional disabilities, the limited restrictions of movement for a time. Safety will be a concern. Thirdly, a disabling of functions. These are progressing. Unimportant and important functions Allocations of finances will be temporarily restrained of necessity. Fourthly, disabled functions. Supply and demand will be difficult. Uh, businesses, some will close. Uh, some governmental entities will be halted briefly, especially in their funding and their releasing of funds. And though short term, this will be a hard blow. Difficulties in this time will be real. They will be felt and experienced, still, this would be short in duration compared to the much greater collapse and difficult times. Let me turn the page. So the key will be trusting in our God. Uh, that will be critical, along with listening to his voice and his directives. Perhaps the greatest fear we'll face 
is not wanting to believe God's warnings and what God is actually saying. It's easier to not believe it, but it won't stop it. We must heed his spoken rhemas and discern properly his true voice from other voices. The true fear of the Lord must be greater than these natural things which can cause fear. The fear of the Lord must become our wisdom. So that's that experience. If I have time, if you want me to, I can move forward to more that ties in with your dream. Absolutely. Go ahead. So there was another part of this that I did not share on the 10th because it continued to unfold even over the, the past couple of weeks. I mentioned it to you. So on the road ahead past this short-term thing, there was a stretch of highway that seemed good. We were able to pick up speed again. But then I found myself, no longer in my vehicle, standing on the banks of what I've come to call a deluge. I-40, and I knew it wasn't just limited I-40, was completely washed out. Bridges were gone. And it was a darkness of night, unlike the first experience where it was more like twilight. This was a darkness of night I could not see across the deluge. So uh, in the deluge, um, there were things rushing past me in these turbulent waters at night that I could see going past me. One of them was a broken flagpole with the American flag. Uh, and I knew that it represented there were no more fit, there were no longer 50 states. The flag was torn, it was tattered, and there were bullet holes in the flag. I saw also an old wooden dead tree, no foliage, come by me with three branches on it. And written on each of the three branches were executive, legislature, and judicial government. It washed, it was dead and it washed past me. I saw autos, automobiles washed past me. I knew that was talking about the automobile industry. I watched as a big sign came by me that said Banks of America. It washed past me. Kroger's sign washed past me. Insurance signs washed past me. And et cetera. Much debris from this deluge that was in our nation came washing past me. I wept. That's how impacting it was, especially when I saw the American flag, because I could not help but think of all who have given their lives for this really republic. So then the Lord, moving forward, speaks to me to listen to what he wants me to hear that's actually going on inside the waters. He said the spiritual dynamic of the waters. Chris, this is hard to hear. It was hard for me to hear. But I mean, there were people in such states of rage and lawlessness and anger and bitterness at one another, at our government, just whoever they focused it upon. A spirit of murder temporarily gripped our nation. And it was chaos within our nation. People were screaming. I heard women screaming, children screaming, men screaming in utter rage. And uh, as bad as that was, and it was bad, um, it got to this point so bad that they all realized we're just going to kill everybody if we don't stop. And they began to cry to one another for mercy have mercy upon us to one another, but it didn't stop it. And after a while, they began to cry out, this is beautiful, have mercy upon us, O oh God. And when that reached a crescendo coming up out of the waters, I heard the audible voice of God while standing on that bank say, and mercy will triumph over judgment in your nation. That's what he said. <laughs> and so daylight began to come up. It began to get daylight, which I knew was the significance of a new day had dawned. I was able to see across that turbulent waters like I couldn't before to the other embankment. And there on the other embankment was another flagpole with a new flag 
And in the center of a white background fly on that flag was an evergreen tree under like the dead tree I saw float by was an evergreen tree with new life. And in the center of that evergreen tree was a white star written above it in evergreen language and below it was uh, the new Republic of America above new Republic below of America. And so I'm looking at the lone, that one star in the center, the white goldish white, by the way, star that represented the new Republic around the perimeter of that flag was a five inch representing the grace of God, a five inch wide gold strip. And within that gold strip were in evergreen stars representing the new states of the new Republic. Wow. That was up on the flag, not all the way. Above that was a Gideon, a small war flag. And in it, it was blue and green. And written again in green was, we will trust in our God. And that was the new day. <laughs> so That is awesome. That yes. is awesome. Terry, it's amazing how fast these shows go. Give me just a second here, folks. I am opening back up the mic again. I am attempting to switch now to a different window, and we'll see if that works. Now, it should be that it is showing. One moment here. You should be seeing this drawing on the screen. And I'm going to keep popping back and forth for a moment here to make sure that it is sharing. Now, let me see. It says I'm sharing screen. And I am still recording. And it should be this screen with a drawing on it. I hope you're seeing this. Um, if not, uh, we'll eventually describe it all and hopefully you'll be able to understand. But it is supposed to be on the screen. Some of the things, though, that I want to go back over with Terry Bennett that he said, you notice he said it's governmental issues. Government is who's governing you. OK, so and he said that we have a righteousness problem in the government. Absolutely. Uh, that comes, though, from the house of God to begin with. We are supposed to be managing this place with God. And when the house of God has fallen to disarray, and it is dismantled from the proper establishment and position that we're supposed to walk in covenant with God as holy priesthood that we are, we then begin to have governmental issues abroad because the house of God is falling out of its duties, being inappropriate with God in adultery itself against God. And so we have spiritual, spiritual matters that are compounding this in, in the nation. And then Terry was talking about the leadership oversight. You'll see that I will we'll speak about leadership oversight issues that are taking place in this dream. Hopefully you can see the uh, visual on here. In addition to the leadership oversight problems that are happening, it's because they have personal agendas, which this, this depiction of the dream that he gave me will display as well. Terry talked about a situation where we have potholes in his vision. Potholes are destruction in the paths of righteousness. Those are areas that, that are, are destructive to the paths of righteousness. He spoke about a failure of a nation. That's what the Lord's been talking to me about. Psalms 2, he says, instead of kissing the sun, we've been resisting the sun. And he talked about human body, broken bones and structure. Exactly. The Lord said, I'm taking this place down to ash and bone. Bone is that there's going to be a structure. But as Terry brought up, and I just heard this this morning, as Terry brought it up, there's broken structure. Broken bones are broken structure. It's not the structure God was intending to build on. It's broken. He speaks of dead tree as some of the things floating down the deluge. A deluge is a flood. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, God's got to raise up a standard. And we hear about the flag. Standard is a flag. Flag is a standard in scripture. 
So there has to be a standard arisen up, which is righteousness in the nation again, with that flag from that camp, from that kingdom, from that leader, the most high God of righteousness. And floating down this deluge of gross darkness that had come into the nation was a dead tree that's withered. Whatever doesn't produce fruit from the Lord withers and dies. And that's governmental death. And he even said that. It's governmental death in the house of God that leads to a governmental death in a land. Broken flag, America, divided to fall. Absolutely. It is going to be divided and fall. And that is the failure of the nation the Lord's speaking about. Because, the, because what the flag stands for in its current stance is pride. Pride he resists. Pride he fights against. So there will have to be a new standard that is resurrected. The fear of the Lord will have to come back. He said he saw spiritual waters, spiritual issues, and the people are overtaken by rage and bitterness and lawlessness. And that is abroad. It is not going to be distinguished between those who purport to be Christian and those who are completely reprobate. It's all, everyone's going to be tied into the truth of what they are inside. And we are going to see that there's going to be very few that walk with God in those paths of righteousness, but who they are will be beacons and Goshens of safe havens in this nation as these things take place. And he said, the true voice of God has to be known again. The true voice. He has prophetic voices out speaking the truth of what these things are going to be. And many, he said, are actually going to have an issue of actually believing the warnings of God still taking place right now. Because many, he said, are unbelieving and they need to see to believe. They cannot even distinguish, like the comment that came to you, they cannot distinguish the voice of the Spirit of God when it speaks through a vessel because they don't fundamentally believe in any of that. And that is by far and large out there in the Antichrist reprobate doctrine and theological doctrine of devils and precepts of men, teaching of men, men's teachings. And it wasn't until the people got the true fear of the Lord again, hit their knees in this nation and hit their knees spiritually in reverence to the high and holy God that they cried out, oh God, oh Lord, save us. And that's when he said mercy will triumph over the judgment that came out. Because then there is a repentance, there's a complete turnaround that has to take place. And at that point, he speaks of a new flag, one with an evergreen, an evergreen on a flag, a white flag. He speaks about white, and that's the purity returning. And, and when you have an, an evergreen, you're talking about an appeal to heaven. So in an appeal to heaven and purity upheld again with the white of that flag, then there will be a new standard erected, a standard of purity in God's people and in that nation, and then it will be, be rebuilt from ashes and bone. That's what he wanted me to bring up about that. If you can see this, this crude diagram that I have drawn out, and I hope you can, because it says that we're still recording and, and this is, is showing the extent of what the Lord and I are talking about pertaining to my dream. When I entered the dream, we'll call this a door entryway. There really was no door, but I just kind of popped into this dream at this point, And this was two nights ago. Now, over here, this is part of like the living area. So this is where the, the, the life of the house takes place. This is where, the, where most of the um, fellowship takes place, et cetera, and so on. I did not look that direction at all, though I knew there was an area over here. I, I, I walked to this point looking straight ahead. I stopped at this point and I knew that over here to the left, right, the left is the area where the bedrooms were. And I knew that my mom was sleeping. Now, mom is an acronym, M-O-M. -M, and when I have it in dreams, I have to ask the Lord, is this about my mom, my literal mom, or is this maker of me, the acronym M-O-M? And I knew instinctively it was maker of me. And my maker or God was resting. He is resting. He's seated on the throne. And we are supposed to be walking this out in this world with him being led of his spirit and managing this place with him. It's a co-laboring. It's a co-mission. So I knew as I stepped in here that someone needed to take care of these children. And right here, I didn't draw it. Lord, forgive me. I didn't draw it. Right here, if you can see this on the screen, in front of the refrigerator, there is an infant that is laying there asleep. 
I can't believe I forgot to put that in there. God. <laughs> anyway, there is a, an infant that is laying here asleep. This is dark. It's nighttime. Everything that's going on is, is at night, which, which is representative of darkness. So there, I walk into this house. I realize that the Lord is expecting me and I'm a representation of leadership to, to be taking care of his household. But when I come in, I see that there's a baby in front of the refrigerator lying on the ground asleep, but hungry. I instinctively know this child needs a bottle. As I look over here, and I'm really hoping this diagram is showing, there's an, a child that is about the age of five. So now we have an age difference between this infant and we have a child. This child is upside down in their chair at, at a dining room table. A dining room table is where you're supposed to get the sustenance, okay, the food. There's no food on this table. There are empty place mats. These rectangles are just place settings. No silverware, no dishes, no nothing, and just flowers. It's a cleaned off table. There's nothing on it. And this child is upside down. It's His head is where his seat should be, and his feet are up where his headrest should be. So he's completely upside down. The position is completely opposite of what it should be. I'm standing here taking all this in, and that's when I'm drawn back into this area. This area was lit up. There was light in there, which was shining that, that, which was telling me that there was some kind of emphasis that I needed to grasp from this area that was different from the darkness that was happening over here with, with the children of God. As I come over here, there's an adult laying on this couch, okay? And technically, a couch is supposed to be for fellowship. You're not necessarily supposed to sleep on a couch. A couch is for fellowship, communion, speaking, talking. There's a lamp in the corner, and there's a wall partition between this dining room slash kitchen, because it was all in one, and this living space that was for awake fellowship, et cetera, and so on, right? Communion. This person here was an adult. So this person represents adult leadership in the house of God. When I came in through this entry where I took, I took notice of the, the status of what's going on in the area where we're supposed to be fed in the house of God, and it's darkness there, and there's nothing on the table, and the refrigerator is right there, and I knew there was food in it. So here we have the truth, the food, the spiritual food. It is not making its way to the table for the other children that are older. And the child, the, the infant is asleep on the floor in front of the, in front of the refrigerator. And there's no adult here to take care of anything. And it's in darkness. So I immediately come over here and I stand over this adult that's laying there that represents leadership in the house of God. And they're, they're holding a white blanket over them which signifies that the Holy Spirit is with them, okay? And, and it was a blanket over them. It wasn't like they were glowing in white, but they were blanketed with the Holy Spirit, meaning the Holy, Holy Spirit has been given to this person, rests with this person in their life because this person was resting on this couch. I leaned over because I thought they were asleep completely at first. I lean over and they have a smile on their face and they're just resting, relaxed on this couch and say to me, I'm not sleeping. I'm just resting my eyes. So this signifies that the leadership is not completely asleep in the house of God. But what God said was, but they're sleeping on the job. And you know what that saying means. It means they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're at leisure. They're doing what they want to do when they want to do it. And they're not according to being governed by God properly. There's a, again, like Terry said, there is this problem with governmental issues in the house of God. And they're taking care of their pleasure, lovers of pleasure, lovers of self in that time. I'm, I'm just resting my eyes. I'm not really asleep. So they know that they have some responsibility to take care of in this house, but yet they're, they're sleeping on the job or, or resting on the job. And over here, you can see the disarray of the house of God while they're leisurely resting their laurels, you know, essentially sit, just sitting around, not doing anything. 
So this is the point when he said to me, so the, 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 the next thing that I say to this person as they open their eyes and smile at me, I say, are you even aware of what's going on over here? Have you seen this? There is a baby laying asleep in front of the refrigerator. There's a child upside down in their seat at the dining room. There's no food on the table and there's darkness. Gross, it's grossly dark over there. That's when the person wakes up. They, and he said, that's, do you understand your calling on your life? You are going to go and wake the church from, from their complacency and from them doing what they want to do, sleeping on the job, essentially. That's when the person comes to, wakes up and says to me, well, I think that the first thing we need to deal with is the teething issue. Okay. So Here's this child, this baby that's supposed to be sleeping in front of the refrigerator on the floor. And when I finally get to the point where I'm rousing this, this complacent, half asleep, rest in their eyes person where the Holy Spirit is in their life covering them, but they're asleep on the job, essentially. They're, they're not moving. They're not taking care of the house of God who is in disarray and in darkness and not being cared for. They say we have to deal with the teething problem. This is when he said to me, okay, when a child in this world is going through teething, what is taking place? And I said, well, first of all, I said, they're going from a transition of needing milk because I knew this child was in need of a bottle or sustenance. Because, but, but they're in the stage of teething, which is transition. So he's needing to transition us off of milk to get on the meat of the word to sit at the table and eat with him, right? But he said, in this transition where they're babies, it's time to grow up. He keeps telling me it's time to grow up, but they're going to come through. He said, a teething process. He said, what is that in, in this world? And I said, teething, you can get fevers. The children can drool. They can have inflamed gums and be otherwise very, very um, much pained and suffering. And then he said, and through great suffering, great tribulation, I will bring them into maturity. That's what he said about the teething issue, because they need to get on the, the meat of the word. They, it's time to grow up and mature because the things that are coming in are going to require it. When I discussed with this child over here, I just discussed this with another sister. Um, she had said, well, these are two different groups. This is obviously the very, very immature in Christ. And these are those that should should be older and know more and be able to eat the meat of the word. But they're completely upside down, meaning that they're demonically oppressed. They're not upright with God. When you're not walking upright with God, you are demonically oppressed. You are not on the paths of righteousness. You are on the paths of unrighteousness. And you have secret operations going on inside of you that need to be cast down and dealt with. Lies, unbelief, pride, etc addictions, you, we could go on and on with what is oppression or what is not walking upright with God, right? Because he's upside down, but he's older and he should be able to, at this point, be eating the meat of the word. But as you can see, this child over here, God said, this infant, their infancy stage, they're on the floor, they're on the foundation. They have barely moved in their salvation at all because the foundation of which we are founded on is the gospel and the salvation of Christ of the truth. They're on the, they're laying on the ground. So they're, they haven't even grown or ascended with God in their growth from the very most basic surface level of spiritual growth with God, according to the truth in their lives and walking in it, walking the paths of righteousness. And on this table, we don't even have anybody in the house of God, any leadership who has set the table, prepared anything, or otherwise has the light on in the house taking care of anything. So he said, as you, as I woke you up in this world, in this lifetime to the truth, brought you out of religion and into walking straight paths with me, showing you the, the extent of my household. As you woke up, now you are going to wake up the rest of the leadership. We're going to have a leadership overhaul. We're either going to grow up and get straight with God and learn the fear of the Lord in our own lives and get busy ministering unto his house. Peter, if you love me, three times he said, then feed my sheep. Over here, no one is feeding the sheep, yet we have the leadership that is lying on their laurels in a place that you're supposed to be in communion and fellowship one with another in this living space, but they're asleep on the job or resting or taking pleasure with what they want to take pleasure with, but not attending to the house of God.
We have foundational problems. We have babies on the floor, babies still on milk who are actually at the point of you should be transitioning. Your teething is coming in. Your teeth are coming in to chew on the meat of the word, right? But the person said, we need to deal with this teething issue first. And I agree. As that leadership woke up, we need to deal with this painful transitional period. And at that point, we had walked over here toward the sink and the cupboards to get whatever we were going to get to deal with this infant's issue with its teething, whatever was going to assist. So we're going into the supply. The cupboards are the supply place of God to deal with this. And the sister and I discussed this is a deliverance issue in the house of God. The house of God needs deliverance. Absolutely. They need maturation. This is one group that needs maturation to get straight with God, to get serious, to get resolute, to grow up. And then the, the ones over here that are supposed to be grown, the ones that are, are claiming with their lips one thing, but they're walking out something else entirely behind the scenes and they're, they're demonically oppressed. So we need deliverance. We need deliverance in growth, in maturity, in caring for these and helping to feed them, right? The refrigerator is right there. They had the truth, but we're unable to come into it for whatever reason. All of this. And it has to do with the leadership in what we call the, the church out there that has been sleeping on the job. And, and, and half that problem is that we have pastors who think that the only role God walks out these days is pastor or teacher. We have apostles. We have prophets. We have evangelists. We have pastors and we have teachers and those aren't just titles of positions that's the problem we get into when we they have roles that they were supposed to bring into the body of christ to to bring the body of christ into maturity so we have got to come off of this this partial half asleep sleeping on the job situation that's going on and we need the whole body of christ to rise up in wherever they are leadership has to be erected first there's an overhaul to leadership there is an arousing and awakening of getting straight with god and getting the fear of the lord and getting busy in feeding the house of god teaching exampling it's everything the lord's been trying to do through my life and i realized that i'm not well known I mean, there's not a humongous reach that we have, but by sharing these videos, we can get the reach out further. And he, and he assures me, oh, it's going to take off at some point because all of what we're bringing forth will be available in these videos for further, for further. When this goes further, they'll be able to come back and understand. So at this point, I'm seeing the need for the leadership to be aroused and there will be first fruits who come in and see the state of what's going on first of first fruits right that come to the leadership that's what an apostle does is they shake up the foundations of the house of god and what's really going on to get everybody else on board so then you've got unity now and when we start getting unity in the leadership then we can start caring for all these issues that need to take place with deliverance because it's what's happening in the house of god that is leading us to the situation that we have in this nation in this world and in the house of God. And it's all an example. And it is nigh upon being dealt with by God. I mean, in a great fashion, because when it does begin, it isn't going to stop until he accomplishes his mission. So the birthing, the rebirthing, there's a double fold. It's a rebirthing of the house of God, waking up, learning the fear of the Lord, getting busy in a commission that we're supposed to be taking people from the foundation level where they're still babies, unable to feed themselves properly, going through a transitional phase to try and get on the meat of the word and then delivering those that are held in bondage. Isaiah 61. For the Lord God is, a, is upon me, for he hath anointed me. He is upon us and has anointed us. But are we getting busy to do that? Are we walking straight with God? We're about to learn the fear of the Lord in the world. And the house of God, once it starts getting straightened out, can then take it to the nation. But the nations and the, are just a people and a culture, and they will be taken down. They will be taken down to ash and bone to rebuild properly, according to the structure of God on righteousness or they won't recover at all. So there's a rebirthing in the house of God that will rebirth nations that will bring in the millennial reign. Eventually there is a pattern of what he's doing. He's coming through with a massive cleansing fire will come through this land and cleanse it with righteousness. And there will be a remnant of a people who will survive this, who will be the ones who cross over to rebuild and take the land in, in, into the promised land with God and the promises of God and build his nation up and take down other kingdoms. It's exactly the story of Joshua.
This is what is coming upon us. This is what is going to be playing out with us in this world and unto the purposes of God. And this is why it is the state of the house of God that has gotten us to this position. It is second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people will humble themselves, we're going to go through a great humbling worldwide. But this nation who claims it is in covenant with God, who has stepped out on that marriage and does not uphold covenant in spiritual righteousness behind closed doors or publicly will go through the shame and humiliation of God's judgment coming in because 2024 is about a year of exposure. All the hidden things are coming out and they're going to come out publicly and we're going to see the extent of it. And what we set up as an idolatrous savior to this nation will be the downfall of it. It will be the beginning of the division and the breakup and the downfall of it because he said, we have an idolatrous people who are looking to a human to do what God should be erected to do. God is your savior. No man is your savior. Christ came as Messiah. God is your savior. And when this nation and these people are founded on righteousness and the God thereof and become the Melchizedek order, Melchizedek means the ki my king of righteousness. When we are founded on that again, this nation will begin to arise again under God. And that's the key under God, literally the most high and righteous God right now. Now it's erected on another God right now. It's erected on pride right now. It's erected on its own glory. And it'll take the fear of the Lord bringing this nation down and the glory that it has erected for itself down. And then it'll arise back in a unified, real glory of the Lord with the presence of the Lord, with the paths of righteousness being exalted and the truth in this nation. And that's the only rebirthing that we will ever see. I don't have a time frame for you. I don't even want to know the time frame for this. But I do know that there's a gravity to this message and that things are lining up when I see that there's a convergence of time markers. And that word, I, I never use that word, but, there, but that word has been coming up over and over and over in secular circles and in God's circles. So we're on a convergence of time. That's when we, we've been saying things for so long and then it finally catches up to the right time period. I don't know when that exact date is. And like I said, I don't nor naturally want to know. My job is to be busy about the house of God, the business of God until then. Be, be, be busy with my father's business until then. I will not be late. I will not be early. I will be right on time and I will bring everything in in its allotted time frame and segment. That's all I'm concerned about. And when it comes down to it, I'm not concerned about a solar eclipse. Is Are these signs that line up? Thing? Absolutely. But, it, but if you're listening to the ones who are accurate with this, great judgment is coming. The sign is to show us that darkness has overtaken the land and obscured the sun, capital S-O-N, the son of God, the light. That's the sign. Repent, repent for your either your redemption draweth nigh if you're going to uphold the paths of righteousness and the king thereof or judgment, it's coming. Wake up. It's time to grow up. That's what's happening right now. And there's a convergence of, of the signs that are coming and what he's speaking to the body of Christ and this need for the house of God to get straight and cleaned and gutted. He's coming to separate goats from sheep and he's taken wolves out completely. And we'll see it all. It is the time of exposure because he's doing a guttural cleaning to the house of God. Because if he doesn't, he has to do that first. Why does judgment come to the house of God first? We're supposed to be the one managing this place. The reprobate are not going to manage this place according to God and he owns it. So he's going to look to his people that he's put in place to manage this place. So we have got to get the leadership cleaned up because as the leadership goes, so will the pew, pew sitting parishioners and everybody underneath. We are an army. There is a general and then there are every rank underneath all the way down to the foot soldiers. That's the problem is that we need everybody in alignment. And as God gets an individual in alignment, we start to increase. And as that multiplies, we increase the light. We increase walking in the paths of righteousness. That is what's going to resurrect a nation from its falter and fail. But it's going to come through great calamity and woe. It will come through great tribulation for in great gross darkness does great tribulation need to come to shake up the people so that the fear of the Lord can return to the land. That's coming 
that's what we're on the on the horizon of there is new birthing coming but as with all new births it's messy and it's painful and then eventually the new life is brought forth this begins in the house of god because we have got to get ourselves in unity under god together in order to birth anything and there is such a tiny remnant of a remnant right now and it's a very heavy load and it's going to come through gross tribulation to bring the people out of gross darkness that is what is coming and that is what he has asked for me to bring forth and father i pray that this is to your standard this was to your expectation i woke up and i told you i'm barely awake consciously so you're going to have to come through and bring this together in a very cohesive and understood format and i believe that you have done that this is a warning father that you're bringing in justice. You're bringing in justice. Justice is God's weights are equally balanced. What a man sows, a man will reap. What a nation sows, a nation will reap. God is not mocked. And a judgment is the actual gavel coming down, and now it takes place. He is a just God, folks. He is just he will give us what we ask for, and what we ask for is how we live and which kingdom and king we exalt. If it is the leadership of darkness and of hell and of sin and transgression against God, it will be a lump sum given back to us when the gavel decree hits and the judgment falls because of justice, because he is a just God. But as Terry said, when the people finally hit their knees, in this nation, in the house of God, and in the world with what is going to come in, and the fear of the Lord returns, then will mercy trump the judgment that he had to unroll. Because then the turnaround within the people, the repentance happened. When repentance happened, just like that, he will then forgive your sin and heal your land. That's what we're going to see take place. And Father, I thank you for this word. I pray that it has all come out to your liking. I pray that the the visuals were able to show up on the screen and that if we will concentrate on what really matters, it is not just the eclipse. It's what does the eclipse stand for? It is not just the things that will take place in the nations, but why are they taking place? And it will be because the people need to turn back to God, turn back to God, turn back to righteousness, erect righteousness in our lives again. But we will without fail, come to that understanding. Every man will, and they'll either fall away and deny God and harden their hearts and stiffen their necks and will not turn back to him. And there will be a great falling away or the remnant that you have come to save, the remnant that you knew you would be saving each and every individual life will soften towards you, hit their knees in a full on fear of God again and reverence to righteousness. And in that, a new birth, a resurrection will take place in the people and in the land. And Father, I thank you for this word. And I thank you for your warnings because when you warn, when you tell your secrets to the prophets and they warn the rest, it is the love of God. And he is speaking, people, he is speaking about what is coming. But like Terry said, have we the knowledge, the spiritual understanding of the true voice of God in his prophets where they are? Can we hear the true voice of God and what he is saying? Because this is the hour to know the voice of God and what he is saying.